Hello, dearies. Welcome to a new episode of the podcast. It's been a while. Yes. This episode will be dedicated to the followers of Stone or Harry Potter and the followers of Stone. Or if you're in another country, which is not the UK, it will be the Sorcerer's Stone. This book marks the beginning of a journey. And while some may not have heard of the Harry Potter saga, because it could be a possibility that all of us are Potter heads, and some might just have known the movies and watched the movies, and those are great. But the books truly take us on a wild journey to the magical world. So let us begin with The Followers of the Stone, which is how I read the books. Uh, we've, from the first chapter, we see McGonagall watching the Dursleys all day long. And it makes you think what's happening, um, what is this cat <laughs> doing there, um, and it means if you read it for the first time without knowing anything, it will be very curious. But, of course, I have already watched the movies when I read the first book, and it was still interesting and exciting to start out like that. And I mean, we see Harry, how he's treated and everything, and the amount of Hogwarts letters that he got before he actually went to Diagon Alley and to King Cross and Platform for nine three quarters. By the time we get to Hogwarts, the first act, um, I mean, it's very similar to the movies. Sorry that I'm comparing here, but it is uh, not in everything. But um, <laughs> selecting a house and how Harry thinks that being a Slytherin is so bad, so he begs the Sorting Hat to not to put him in Slytherin. I'm a Slytherin, of course, because you didn't know. Um, I guess you just start to, or you should form your own opinions of each house and everything but if you see it from Harry's point of view of course you gonna say Slytherin is the worst these people are bad and all the bad wizards come from that or so Ron says to, to Harry and it's so in, I mean in the books and so don't be a Slytherin that when you first start reading it the, all the books you don't want to be there and me for example with the first time that I did it I, well, I want to be a, a Gryffindor because I mean that's where Harry is and all the good great wizards come from there and from this start I always first got Slytherin and then got Gryffindor when I did some of those tests back in the day and then I just accepted that I'm Slytherin because every time that I did a different one, I got Slytherin. So I just faced the facts and accepted that it doesn't matter what they say in the books. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to say that because it's always something that comes up. Now, going back to the books and how good it is to when you read The Fall of Stone. Um, you are in Hogwarts and you discover all the wonderful things. That there's moving, there's a three-headed dog, or not to go to the Forbidden Forest. And when you do go to the Forbidden Forest, you see all these fantastic bits and centaurs and discover that 
this is perhaps one of the most wonderful places in the world and you just want to be there. The Wizarding World transform the view of everything and you just want to go there and be a wizard and that's that's pretty amazing to to accomplish because you want to be inside this book I mean it's not the only book that does that of course but with Harry Potter you really see yourself and you immerse yourself in the books and want to know what happens and how will Harry even if he's a kid how will he manage to get out of <laughs> all this trouble he gets into because he's a 12 year old so it's what makes you keep reading and want to continue the journey and by the I'll say 80% or the last 20% more like it um, you feel like Harry because everyone's returning to their magical homes in the wizarding community and you have to go back to the mogul world and back to the Dursleys and why is this happening to me? <laughs> so get on the train and there it is like ending and you, you cannot get fast enough from the uh, summer, I think, on vacations to go back to, to school, to go back to Hogwarts. And that's pretty amazing. I mean, I really liked the, the book back then, and then I when I reread it, I don't know, a couple of years ago, I also was into it and wanted to read the whole saga once more. So yeah, uh, this book is pretty, I mean, it's not the best one in the saga, obviously, but it's a good start of everything, of course. I, <laughs> confession time, I didn't read the Fire of the Stone, uh, it wasn't the first book that I read in the saga, it was The Prisoner of Azkaban, because I have watched a movie in one and two and wanted to know what will happen next. But after I read The Prisoner of Azkaban, I went to this one, um, The Chamber of Secrets, of course, and then I went to, I think I reread Prisoner of Azkaban or just skipped it and went to The Cover of Fire. But yeah, it was still no matter where you read it, the order you read it. And you can just open one of the books and stay there. And whatever chapter that you start reading, you'll be hooked. <laughs> and that's, that's great. So, yeah, I really like this one. And this podcast thing turned out a lot longer than I expected. You know, I have so much to say especially about the Howard houses. But for the reading uh, version of this, you can go to the blog, of course, and hpage.org and read the book review there. Uh, I've been writing each review for each book. Um, I didn't do it back then years ago, I did it recently because I have already read for several years the book and I just thought, oh, yeah, let's just do it and add a new blog post to the to the blog dedicated to the Wizarding World. And that's all for this one, dearest. I hope you enjoy and stay to the end. And don't forget to visit my social media and the blog as well. Thank you for listening to the podcast. See you on the next one.